real estate is a very interesting asset class, and a lot of us already own real estate. And so when you look at it, should we utilize some of that real estate that you currently own in your primary residence? There's a couple of ways to do that. You can downsize your current residence and say, hey, I have this bigger home. Maybe I downsize into a condo. Uh, maybe it's just a one or two bedroom. All the kids are out of the house. Or if you want to stay in the house, potentially there's something that you can do called a reverse mortgage. Al, let's talk a little bit about downsizing. Yeah, and downsizing, Joe, that's, that's an important concept. And I think what happens is, as you mentioned, I mean, for folks in Southern California or any high cost real estate area, you probably end up with real estate being your biggest asset, as we just saw. And a lot of financial planners say, don't, don't utilize it. You look at other things. And we're going to tell you, if you live in a high cost area, you don't necessarily want to ignore it. Now, downsizing, we know from the stats, a lot of you, a lot of you don't want to move. But the truth is, if that's where the majority of your, your equity is, you at least may want to consider it. And downsizing simply means moving to a cheaper place in your current locale, or Joe, maybe moving to another cheaper place out, outside your high cost area. The, an example is pretty staggering as to what it can mean. Here's an example, $700,000 home, All right? Let's say you have a mortgage here of a couple hundred thousand dollars. You downsize, you say, you know what? We want to get rid of this big house and we're going to purchase something for about $400,000. We get rid of this mortgage, all right? We got some home equity here. Right now, the home equity is four hundred thousand because you paid cash. You got rid of your mortgage payment, and guess what? You freed up another hundred thousand dollars. So, if you do the math here, right? So, you got rid of this mortgage payment of fourteen hundred dollars a month, plus you added another hundred thousand dollars of liquidity. So, if we use that four percent rule that we used before, that could generate another four thousand dollars of income. But then if I look here, you freed up another, what, close to $17,000, $18,000, plus four, that could be $21,000 of additional cash flow just like that, just by downsizing into a little bit smaller home. Just think about it. Maybe you have a smaller home, it's a little bit more cramped, but you got a lot more cash to get the heck out of the house, right? You can travel, you can do different things, spoil the grandkids, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and I think that's important because a lot of folks feel like they're stuck. And, and the truth is, if you look at your real estate maybe in a little different way, then you can perhaps have a little bit better retirement. And of course, then you're going to be considering about taxes because a lot of people think it's the old rule. Once in a lifetime exclusion on real estate, that, that's been gone for 20 years. So right now we have a section 121 exclusion, which simply means this. If you sell your home, you've lived in it for a couple of years and, and, uh, and owned it for a couple of years out of the last five, then you get a $500,000 exclusion exclusion for a couple and a $250,000 exclusion for an individual. So realize that in this example we just did, if you had a home for $700,000, uh, maybe you bought it for $300,000, there's a, maybe a $400,000 gain. But if you're married, you get an exclusion, you pay zero tax on that. Another thing that you might want to consider too, if you want to stay in the larger home and you have that mortgage and you want to get rid of that mortgage payment, or maybe it's debt free and you're looking to generate additional cash flow, uh, you could do a reverse mortgage. There's something that's called a HECM, a home equity conversion mortgage, right? So this is not your conventional mortgage where you're paying a mortgage payment to it. It's just in reverse where you could take capital or get a payment stream for the rest of your life. All it does is build up that debt with inside the equity of your home that you'll never pay back. Once you pass or sell the home, then right, you, you just take whatever that note is minus the equity and then that would go to the heirs or that's what you would receive as cash as you purchase another home. There's also private reverse mortgages here too. So if you don't wanna conform with um, the HUD, uh, within the HECM, you could do something a little bit different. Alan, these are a little bit bigger, a little bit more non-conforming, but there's always opportunity for people if they wanna take a look. Well, there are, and, and so when, when it comes to the conforming loans, you're, you're somewhat limited as to how much you can borrow. And typically, it's, it's based upon the HUD uh, rates for your area in terms of the maximum loan. And you gotta have usually about 50% loan to equity or 50% equity, I should say, at least in your property to make this work. Probably most importantly, though, you gotta be 62 years of age. Uh, you need to uh, live in the home as your primary residence. And you need, if you have debt on the home, this home equity, I mean, this reverse mortgage needs to pay off that debt.